Thanks so much for joining me. It looks like it's time to roll. Um, I think everything's all set and we are going to start talking about soup because it's summertime, folks. I know nobody loves soup better than I do for pool parties, picnics at the beach, uh, a nice broccoli cheddar soup. It just fits the bill perfectly. And I know you guys are all with me on a good hot summer day. There's nothing more refreshing. Okay. So that's why we're talking about soups today. Um, uh, when I talk about soups, this is really not about soup, right? I'm going to make a broccoli cheddar soup at the end of this thing, but I am going to take a really roundabout way of doing it. As we get to this soup, um, we are going to be looking at like French sauces, and we are going to be looking at, you know, thickening all liquids, not just soup, right? And I want to talk about finishes and all of that. So I'm, I'm going to basically make this soup in, in two different ways. I'm going to make it one way and then turn it inside out and make it in another way. You're going to know some cream soup knowledge when you get done with this, okay? Uh, that's kind of the big thing with this class is kind of learning this French sauce, learning how to thicken the sauce really to make the French sauce. Once you know this French sauce, you can make any cream soup out of it, and that's what you'll see. Now, when we're thickening things uh, in this class today, we're going to be talking about a basic thickening medium today, and that is roux, R-O-U-X, okay? It's kind of a weird word, and it isn't pronounced the way it's spelled necessarily, right? But this is a combination of flour and fat, okay? And what kind of fat? Whatever appropriate fat uh, to the dish that you're making, right? So um, uh, going back to the roux, okay? Equal parts of flour and fat. We cook those two items together, and then we might set it aside, let it cool a little bit, and then we will get a stock or a broth, a flavorful liquid of some kind. It could be milk, it could be brown stock, it could be a white stock, anything. And I can use this roux, this equal parts of flour and fat. There it is again, okay? I can use that roux to thicken that liquid, okay? This is a huge thing in the kitchen. And if you're a brand new newbie cook and you wanna be able to walk in and make a soup of the day or something like that, hey, you need to be able to work with a roux. You need to know how to thicken liquids with a roux, okay? So what I wanna do is start cooking off a roux, this equal parts of flour and fat cooked together and it's used to thicken liquids. That'll be kind of the first thing we do. After we see that, we're gonna bring in some liquid and we're gonna thicken that up and show you this original French sauce velouté that I was talking about. Let me move. Going back to it, we're starting a roux in my pan and I'm, I'm gonna eyeball things as I always do on these classes. I'm just gonna kind of try and eyeball equal parts of flour and fat and I'll show you what that looks like. Now, when I say equal parts of flour and fat, I, uh, I should mention that uh, I'm not using equal parts by volume. I'm doing equal parts by weight. This is a very different thing. Think of how much fat weighs versus flour, right? And so if I do equal parts by volume, there's not enough flour in there. So I need a lot of flour to go with a little bit of fat in this, okay? Equal parts by weight of flour and fat. I'll show you what that looks I'm like. I'm not... I'm not gonna weigh this or anything, but uh, I'm familiar with how it looks. Now, the fat that I'm using is just my regular kitchen fat that I always use, and I'm just ma really making a roux. I'm not gonna use much of this, but I wanted to kind of work with some roux here, show you a little bit of roux work, okay? So step number one, I guess, for your roux is just melting your fat if you have a chunky fat, okay? And then I'm gonna bring the flour in. Let me grab a spoon. And I'm just gonna start shoveling some flour in there. Awesome, awesome. Okay, so I'm, I'm not really measuring too much. And once I get that in there, I'm gonna get a wooden spoon. You guys see me using a wooden spoon a lot in my kitchen, okay? And I'm just gonna stir that together. And when I do that equal parts of flour and fat, it's gonna have a flow to it. I usually feel like that's a little bit loose for me. So let's see what this looks like. And by the way, you don't have to be careful stirring this together. It just flows right together, no problem. Actually, I'm hitting it pretty good. What I usually talk about um, for a more experienced cook is um, working with a roux that looks like it flows like lava. I want it thick enough to where um, it's, it's not super thin, right? It's not all fat. I want some flour in there, but I want it to flow like lava. I want it to spread out in the pan I just don't want it watery. So I'm gonna throw in one more spoonful here. We'll see what that looks like. I want it to spread out in my pan. Ah, thanks for coming, everybody. You know, street cooking class, quarantine kitchen, happy hour show. 
um, if you can see in the pan, it's a little bit golden colored. And what's going to happen as I cook this, it's going to start getting even lighter. It's going to turn um, uh, white in color and then it'll start turning golden again. It's kind of a strange apparition, okay? Uh, the glare's a little weird in my kitchen. What if I get a little closer? That might help. Oh, much better. There it is, there it is. You can kind of see what's going on. I'm worried uh, my camera might start heating up. It'll act a little funky. But you can see that my flour, it has a flow to it when I tap my pan. You can see that roux spread out as I tap it. That's really kind of nice. Any looser than this, and you're just using extra fat. Basically what I'm looking for is the flour to spread out so it's in contact with the pan. I got a lot of surface area there and it's cooking efficiently. If it's clumped up, it doesn't cook very efficiently. So just thick enough to where it's just spreading out is what I'm looking for. So this, I'm gonna cook this for about three minutes. I'm gonna give it a little toss and it ought to be white on the other side. And it sure is. It's just a different color. It's very difficult to discern over the camera. But as you cook this, the, the flour, it just kind of turns a little bit white. And it takes about three minutes or so to do this. Now, I should talk about the heat here. I'm probably on about four out of 10. I'm not on a super high heat. Sorry, I didn't mention that before. Okay. If you're just joining us, we are cooking out some roux. This is a thickening agent made of flour and fat, and we are going to be using this to thicken up some tasty liquids a little later on to make some soups. Okay. For the rest of you guys, let me zoom back in. And there it is in all of its glory. Okay. So I'm going to go through this roux as I cook it out. Okay. I mentioned it's equal parts of flour and an appropriate fat, whatever fat tastes good in your dish, that's the one you want to use, okay? A visual cue for this, look for the consistency of hot lava. It's going to kind of spread. If you want to uh, uh, measure it, the equal parts are um, by weight. I need to mention that. Once it's in there, you want to cook the ingredients. You want to use a wooden spoon so you're not scraping the pan and all of that. And then cook it to the desired doneness, okay? If I'm making a really white sauce, I want a white roux. So right now, I'm at a white roux right now. It's lighter in color than it was when I started. And I would stop right now if I was making like a milk-based sauce, something along the lines of, say, country gravy or something, like how it's milk-based. Chowder is milk-based. I, I want a roux that's white in color. Now we're going to be making a velouté. That's another French sauce and it's based on a white stock thickened with roux basically, okay? And as I make a, a velouté, it's, a, it's not white so much, but it's more ivory in color. So we're going to cook this a little bit more. Ivory or blonde might be another good way to say that. In fact, that is the French term. So the roux is looking very white right now and it's going to turn back to that yellow color almost exactly to what it looked like when we started. Every time when I flip the roux, the underside looks white. This is gonna to start toasting. I think I will uh, turn up the flour here and cook it a little more. Now you're gonna, I'm gonna cook this to a blonde color. As I said, if I wanna continue cooking this, I can cook it to a brown color and I might use that brown color for a brown sauce, which I don't really do. I usually do reduction sauces for brown sauces. That's a whole other thing, right? Um, but uh, I would definitely use a brown roux for something like a gumbo, right? And so I would just continue cooking this and cooking it until the flour literally toasts inside and becomes brown in color. And it's a beautiful thing. I think we are back to that blonde color now. It's almost the same color as when we started. And this pan still has a lot of residual heat in it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn this off and I'm going to continue stirring it because this is still cooking. That's a big, heavy pan. Going back to the idea of gumbo, I would continue cooking it and cooking it until it came out. I usually describe it as like darker than peanut butter, but not as dark as chocolate. So right in between those Reese's peanut butter, right? Uh, 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 it's pretty darn dark and a, a beautiful brown brew is just a beautiful thing all by itself, but it's not something you want to eat. It's just flour and fat, right? Um, so check the color of this. It really is turning blonde here. Um, that residual heat in the pan 
this is where I want to actually stop the cooking. So I think I'm going to pull it out of there and put it into a little dish for now. All right, so there goes my roux. And I'm just going to use a little bit to demonstrate a French velouté. A velouté, again, is a mother sauce. And, and it's really kind of a building block for a lot of different stuff in a French kitchen. Day, okay, so I'm going to set that aside. And what I'm going to do next is show you the stock that I have. Okay. When I'm making a stock around the house here, I'm not just breaking out Jaws chicken bones or something like that. It's kind of a kitchen sink kind of thing. And I'm just collecting bits and bobs around the place, especially during quarantine times. Right. And so my stock here is not like a crystal clear white chicken looking sauce. It's got a little edge of color to it. It's still clear, uh, uh, you know, because we, we simmered it low and slow for a very long time to extract those flavors out of there. But uh, uh, it's darker in color than you might see from like a standard chicken so uh, stock or something. Also, I've got a little fat cap on the top of this. So I want to harvest that. You guys know I, uh, if you've been watching these at all, you know I I use uh, rendered cooking fats in my kitchen. And when I make a stock, I like to leave all the fat in there so I can harvest it. Now, this is not a really, really super gelatinous stock, but I can see a little body to it. But it's not jiggling. This was mostly vegetables, just a very few bones in there and things like that. Just what I collect during my cooking. So you can see while that fat is cold, I can just lift it off of there. If your um, stock is hot, it's really, it's much more difficult to remove the fat, much easier when it's cold like that. So a lot of the times I'll leave the fat on there. I will uh, chill my stock overnight. And in the morning, a lot of times I can just lift the cap off in one piece if I'm doing a big amount, okay? So I'm gonna be saving my fat in that little dish for cooking, cooking purposes. It's got a little bit of liquid in there, I should mention. What I wanna do is put this in a pan and simmer the liquid out, okay? That's a whole other, other conversation trying to get it in there but there's water in there and you don't want water in your cooking fat so that needs to be simmered out of this we're going to make a french velouté sauce okay so you are going to need a whisk you're going to need a wooden spoon you're going to need some roux and you're going to need some cold liquid here okay this is liquid thickening 101 i've got a hot roux here so i've got a cold liquid here this is going to take a little time to bring up because it's cold okay the other uh, uh the other one might go a little quicker so as I do this, we also will incorporate the roux kind of in stages, okay? So what I'm going to do is work a little bit of roux into this liquid and stir it in. No heat. There's no heat underneath this pot. I want it to be able to be distributed in there before it starts gelling up and thickening. So what I did was I just stirred the roux in there and it's completely distributed. Now that it's distributed in there, I'm gonna go ahead and start kicking up the heat. As the heat is coming up, the uh, starches wanna settle down to the bottom. So I wanna keep them moving. Now there was a little more of that roux on my spoon. It's slowly incorporating as well. But I gotta keep that starch moving. Right now, I'm not sure if you can see it, but there are clouds of starch floating around in there. Let me get you closer here. Clouds of starch. And I don't have to stir this constantly, but anytime I stop, again, starch wants to settle down and gum up on the bottom. So I want to keep that stuff moving. One thing I'd want to point out, I pulled my whisk out of there. I got my roux smooth or distributed, I should say. And then I got rid of my whisk and went to my wooden spoon. I don't want to scrape metal on metal in here. So I'm gonna get rid of that whisk and go back to my spoon. We're making a sauce velouté right now. I should say this liquid is pretty darn dark. I, I mentioned my stock's a little dark. This would usually be like a chicken or a fish stock or something. A little bit, little bit dark in color. It's quarantine kitchen, baby. We gotta utilize what we got. All right, back to it. So really not vigorous stirring. I'm just keeping things moving. I don't want starch to settle to the bottom. And by the way, my, my fire's on about nine out of 10. Okay, it's pretty well cranked. And this is all very straightforward, nuts and bolts, culinary school cookery right here. Thickening a liquid 101, that's really all I'm doing here. It ain't about velouté to me. It's like, can you thicken a liquid and get it to the right consistency? Now, as these starch granules heat up in that liquid, they will begin to swell. It's almost like a sponge or maybe a, more like a water balloon is a better way to look at it. 
they start soaking up liquid and swelling and swelling. And once all that starch is completely swollen, swelled with the liquid, um, that's about as thick as it's gonna get, okay? And how do I know when the starches have pretty much swollen up with their maximum amount of liquid? I know it when it hits a vigorous boil and it boils for about a minute. If you boil this liquid with a starch in it for about a minute, that's as thick as it's gonna be, pretty much. So then you can kind of make additional adjustments. So as I was just talking that last little bit, it really came to the boil and you guys all see that. I kind of wish it was a little thinner because I wanted to add a little more roux, but I got to say that's about what I'm looking for for my velouté sauce. Now, what I would do with a velouté sauce, at this point, I might toss in a little bay leaf. I might toss in a, uh, there's a few bay leaves and I might toss in a little thyme. So I don't want it all to float around in there. So I'm gonna tie it all together into what we call a bouquet garni, okay? So there's a couple of bay leaves that got wet because I washed my thyme. And I'm gonna lay some thyme leaves on them and I'm just gonna get a piece of string. Now, I need to, I know we're making a bouquet garni right now, but let's go back to this sauce. And I need to show you, there's a little bit of schmegma uh, uh, collecting on the top, right? Um, there's a culinary term for that, schmegma, and we call that scum, okay? Um, a lot of the time when we're making these, these starch thickened sauces, we're looking for the starch in there, but there are other components in the flour. That all rises to the top and kind of gums up, and that's what we're looking at here. The more of that that's in there, the more like flour this is going to taste like, and so what I want to do is uh, lift that off of there, and so I'll get a little skimming spoon, okay? Just a little uh, uh, perforated spoon, and I'm going to get a dish, and we're just going to go ahead and lift that schmeg off of there, okay? It'll all come off in one piece if you're lucky. The more of that I can get off, the more of this is going to taste like velouté instead of flour. Get rid of the schmeg. Skim your sauce. Also, while this is simmering here, we're cooking a starchy flavor out of this. It's going to simmer for about 10, 15 minutes, maybe even 20. It depends, right? But what we're looking for, it's not about a time. We're looking for a flavor effect going on here. I want uh, uh, I don't want a starchy feel on my palate, like you'll smash it up against the roof of your mouth and feel powder, like flour, raw flour, okay? I want that to be gone. That's usually a case of uh, I need to simmer my my stock or my sauce out a little while longer. Uh, another thing is though, you might get a really flowery taste and that tends to be like undercooking your roux. If you don't cook this roux long enough, it tends to kind of have a weird funky taste to it, okay? But uh, basically, once this is together, we got to simmer it out. It's already collecting another skin of schmeg on top, and we'll be skimming that very soon. Skim the scum. My bouquet is practically done. Let me get the camera on that. I'm just tying a non-fancy knot in this. I think I'm going to go around it another time here because that bay leaf is not snug. There we go. And in goes my bouquet. It just went in there. So now I got a little flavor working. And this is my velouté sauce, just out for a cruise. I'm gonna roll out with another skim of the scum right now. Get rid of that stuff. And ladies and gentlemen, that is your French sauce velouté. It's probably gotta cook for another five or eight minutes, you know? So I'm just gonna kinda of kick it off to the side. Heck, the residual heat in there will probably cook it out. But as you can see, this consistency, pretty close to cream soup consistency, you saw that consistency pretty close to what a sauce would look like or a soup or something like that. This is a base for a, a cream soup, any cream soup. If I want to puree broccoli into this right now, which I will kind of in a minute, you know, in a manner of speaking, okay, we're going to have a soup. If I had some leftover carrots from last night, I puree it up right in there. It's already cooked and all I have to do is puree it, finish with a little cream, boom, cream of carrot soup, right? Um, I have some, uh, uh, um, Let's see another great one. Let's say I wanted to do like a curry soup or something like that. Um, so I might do a curried carrot soup. I might do a little bit of onion and celery and things like that and sweat out some curry powder in along with that. And then instead of making a roux on the side, I could probably just throw flour in with the vegetables that I'm sweating and those spices, make a roux right there in the pot, add liquid to that, 
And then whatever veggies in it are in there, I can puree up later on and boom, I've got a puree soup as well. I just gave you three different strategies for making a cream soup and I'm gonna show you one of them in just a minute, okay? Actually, I just showed you one right now. I made a velouté, puree veggies into it. Um, uh, method one, either throw cooked veggies and puree or chop up a bunch of broccoli, dump it in there and puree that. Let it cook and then puree it and you're good to go, okay? So we're gonna see three different methods of cooking this. We'll reinforce them all. I'm just gonna pull this sauce off and we're gonna start another pot of soup. For making a cream soup, what I wanna do is this one, I'm gonna start out with some vegetables and cook them into it to kind of give a little background. In the beginning, I just cooked the flour and fat together to make a roux and it's just not a lot of flavor. I think this French sauce, if you were to eat it right now, there's no salt in it or anything, right? But even if you season it, there's really not gonna be much to it. You know, you get your thyme and your bay leaf in there. That's about it. Um, I want to get maybe a little bit of uh, onion sweated out in there, right? And a little bit of celery. And also, um, I'm going to make a broccoli soup in a minute. Also, I've got broccoli stem, and that's another vegetable that I could kind of incorporate early on in the process to give more broccoli flavor and, you know, and, and utilize. I'm going to cut up some veggies and get them sweating for a broccoli soup, okay? And you're going to kind of see me do another version of what you just saw. So this is gonna be super, super simple, right? All right, so I'm gonna be doing some broccoli stem to start with, a little bit of celery and, whoa, tap an onion, okay? That's what you're gonna see me cut up. I'm just gonna get it all ready. Now, none of this stuff has to be pretty. None of these knife cuts have to be pretty here. I just want them to be fast so they can get up in that pot, okay? I'm gonna grab a knife and steal it up. We did knife skills last week. Blades of Glory. If you guys missed that one, check it out. It's out on YouTube. Blades of Glory. I went over all the knife cuts, all basic skills, how to take care of your knife, all that good stuff. Okay, so let's start with onion first, okay? That's usually my opening gambit. And uh, I'm gonna just use half of this guy. And I'm just gonna zip through this really quick. You guys know how to do an onion by now, I think. Oh yeah, everybody that knows me knows how to do an onion by now. Boom. Taking the top and bottom off, I'm gonna peel and I'm gonna just zip through it really, really quick, okay? Going across the top, zip, zip, zip. And then I'm just gonna go across the face. I didn't do horizontal cuts, this is a really small onion. Zip, 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 just really rough chop. And I'm gonna actually start cooking this onion right now. We'll get a little fat going in this pan and start, start um, sweating. I have a great idea. This is a great sauce dynamic here. Now, I'm going to cook a roux in here, but it's going to have vegetables and all that going on, right? I want to cook the moisture out of these vegetables. I don't want any moisture present. Later on, I'm going to add flour, and I don't want the flour to gum up if it hits water and wet veggies and things like that. I mentioned this fat that I extracted, uh, scavenged off the top of my stock. It's got some broth in it too, but what I can do is simmer that broth out of it during this sweating process, right? So I'm just gonna use this fat. It's flavorful. It's got the same flavor that my broth does. I'm gonna throw it in there. I'm gonna turn on some heat and it's gonna start uh, simmering the liquid out of there. And eventually it, I can throw these veggies right in there. I can sweat in the presence of fat or liquid. I can sweat in liquid, so it's not gonna hurt my process. The only thing I have to do is make sure that I um, cook all of the liquid out before I add my fat in there. That's the name of the game. But I'm gonna need to do that with my veggies anyway. So I just cut up an onion and it's going in the pot. And I kicked up my heat pretty well. I'm gonna kick it up some more. We're sweating here. Whenever you're sweating vegetables, we're trying to remove moisture and adding just a tiny little pinch of salt will help you remove moisture. Salt moves into the cell walls, water moves out. I'm gonna move into some celery now, okay? Um, this guy's a little, a little too long to cut, right? So I'm gonna cut him down and then cut him a little smaller. All right. So just minced up a little bit of celery, just a little background flavor. So it's not just straight broccoli. And then I don't wanna throw the green in here, okay? Uh, the green is gonna turn brown by the time this is all cooked out. But what I can use are stems, okay? So I'm gonna cut this down, get rid of the pretty stuff and use some of this stem. And I can't use it all in this little soup I'm making here. But I just wanna use a little bit to give you guys the idea. Hey, in a kitchen, I'm not throwing this whole thing away. I'm gonna incorporate that into some soups and things like that. 
Now, as you're using the stem, there's a very woody skin, I guess, or, or a surface on the outside. So you want to get your knife and peel that off. It was kind of broken right there. Also, there's a little damage. See how it's just kind of busting off? It's really heavy. So take that heavy stuff and the stuff inside, it tastes like broccoli. And it might even lighten the color of my soup slightly. So I'm using it. You're not throwing that stuff away. By the way, leaves are ultra nutritious and will give you a lot of great color. So any little leaves you want in there. And I got most of that heavy skin off of there and I, I'm, I'm not gonna use much of it. So I'm just gonna add a little bit of a broccoli stem to this, cut it on down. Doesn't have to be pretty, I just want it fast. <laughs> My students heard that a lot from me. If I'm gonna puree something, I don't need pretty cuts. I want it in the pot so we can cook it down. So, hey, I'm adding broccoli flavor in right here. Boom, 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 zip, zip, zip. And that's all gonna get pureed up. Now it's making a lot of noise in the pot because there was liquid in there, right? Remember all the liquid that was in my fat that I pulled off of the stock. Now the rest of the uh, broccoli here, I'm really gonna cut down. I want this stuff to cook really quickly. All of the green, this is all gonna get pureed. Zipping, oh, sorry, that's frustrating for you guys. You can see me zipping through those, knife, those uh, broccoli flowerettes. I don't know that I'll need all of this. Maybe I will, yada, yada. So right now I'm just trying to sweat veggies in this pan, cooking out the moisture. Okay, looking down here, we got a bunch of just shredded broccoli. This stuff's gonna cook up in an instant when it hits that pan. I don't want it sitting there and cooking for 20 minutes, right? The color is just gonna die. By the way, this method over here, doing all the veggies ahead of time works great with things like carrots, right? You almost can't hurt the color of carrots. So I can have my carrots cooking in here, throw flour on top of them, make a roux, cook it out, and then add liquid, and then puree the whole thing once it's done. It all works. And right now, I'm gonna turn these veggies down. I don't wanna get any color out of these guys, but they're just cruising along. They got a little color earlier just from the fat I was using off of my stock. It wasn't super clean, okay? But uh, I want those vegetables to be completely transparent. That's what's gonna tell me that there's no more liquid left in these veggies. And I am holding back all of this green, all of that beautiful green stuff's going in later. It's not gonna cook for more than 30 seconds, maximum nutrients, maximum color. You might even get a little texture in there. Be kind of nice. And we are looking at the veggies, picking up just a little bit of color in there. And what I can do when I'm picking up color, okay, I'm just gonna do this because it's at home, but if there's liquid in the pan, you won't get any browning, okay? So what can I do? I can add a little of this. I got a little white wine there, boom. Add a little of that in there, why not? Or a little water or something. Liquid in there will keep it from browning. And I don't really want brown right now. Now I did that because these veggies are still not cooked out. I need them to get pretty well transparent, okay? So we're still cruising, I added liquid. By the time I cook this liquid out, I think I'm gonna be good with the vegetables and I'll be able to add my flour to make a roux. So we're just cruising along. If you look in the pan, very difficult to see this, I'm sure, but we'll try. If you look in there, the fat looks more clear. Earlier when it had the liquid, it was more cloudy looking. And as the, liqu uh, the liquid cooks away, the fat remains and it remains clear. And I think it's getting quieter. It sounds more like sizzling than boiling. I'm gonna go ahead and uh, start kicking in some flour. Big thing we had to do was cook moisture out of the veggies and moisture out of that fat sample that I had there. But let's go ahead and work some flour in to make a roux. You've seen this before without veggies. Now we're doing it with veggies. Also, I'm just gonna eyeball this in here. I can add more fat if it's not any good. Also, I did a chowder class that was very similar to this. The only difference is I cooked out a little bit of a bacon to start that chowder. Otherwise, I cooked out veggies and added flour. Now, I'm switching to my wooden spoon and adding, incorporating the flour into the fat, just like I did in the first recipe. And I'm gonna cook this out. If it gums up on you, add a tiny bit more fat. In fact, I think it's not really flowing like lava right now, so I am gonna add a little more fat to this. So this is like rendered, it's like bacon fat. It's gonna be good in there actually. <laughs> I always got this funky fat around. 
And so I just added a little more fat and now I got more flow to my roux. It's flowing like lava. We want hot lava. We want lava so it spreads out in the bottom of the pan and cooks effectively. Checking my flame, on a, I'm on about four out of 10 when I'm cooking a roux out. It's just barely sizzling around the edges. And every once in a while, I'll give it a little stir. Oh yes. Oh yes, oh yes, it's a good day. Any day with soup is a good day. You better believe it. Oh, a summer day without soup is like a summer day without hot chocolate. You just gotta have it. So right now we're cooking the flour out in the fat and I'm just kind of scraping it around, making sure nothing's getting chunky in the bottom. At the end of this process, we're gonna be finishing with like cream. Uh, actually, no, we're not. We would usually finish with cream, but since I don't have cream, I'm gonna finish with cheese and have a conversation about that. So this is gonna be a broccoli cheese. You can see that my roux is just cooking out. It still looks like it's spreading. It's uh, round around the edges. It's not chunky looking. It's got a flow, a little bit of a flow. And I'm gonna say it's pretty much cooked off in about another second here, okay? And we are making a cream soup, everybody. Still hanging with me. We're actually gonna be uh, putting this together pretty quickly. It won't take long to thicken this one up. And I think it's about time to start incorporating liquid. Now, earlier I had a, a hot roux and a cold liquid and I'm in that situation again. But last time I had the liquid in a pot and I was adding roux into it. This time I have roux in the pot and I'm adding liquid to it, okay? So in this case, I'm gonna go in thirds and I kind of mentioned that before, but I really got the right amount of roux in the first one, right? But for this one, I've got roux in the pot. I wanna add about one third of my liquid and I'm gonna go ahead and say that's probably, I'm trying to make about two cups here, okay? So I'm gonna add just a little bit of liquid here. Let me kind of show you. Boom. I'll just pour it in. Nobody's measuring anything. Let me get that camera a little closer for you. There you go. There you go. And it's all lumpy in there. There's no heat on this thing right now. I need a chance to smooth all of this out. Now, earlier I had said, I don't know how thick this is going to be until it hits a boil. So once I get this incorporated, uh, we wanna, we're going to heat it up and we're going to see how thick it is. So I think we're pretty much... Um, smooth. I'm going to change to a wooden spoon now. That can get in those corners and I'm going to turn on the heat. It's starting to get thick already. So I'm probably on about five out of ten. And we never know how thick a sauce is until it hits a boil. That's something I said to my students constantly. Chef, what do you think of the consistency? Have you hit a boil yet? Well, if you haven't, you're just never going to know. So this is getting pretty thick. You can see that's pretty much uh, wallpaper paste already. I don't think I need to go any further. I know I'm going to need more liquid. I'm going to turn off the heat again, and I'm going to add more liquid. We add the liquid in stages when we're incorporating into a roux. We add it in thirds. I'm going to switch back to my whisk and smooth it out. I am off the heat. It's a beautiful thing. This is how we get a beautiful lump-free sauce or soup cream soup. Again, my stock is much darker than I would like. I probably had a few little red onion peels in there. And that's why I don't like an onion peel necessarily in my stock. It tends to darken it. So I like the oniony bits. And it's all smooth again, okay? I've incorporated two parts of my liquid. Now I'm going to kick the heat on and I'm gonna switch back to that wooden spoon again. You guys see what I'm doing? I'm using the whisk only for incorporating roux, that's all. And once it's done, I get it out of there so I'm not scraping metal on metal. Detail, little details. As this is coming up, I talked about it in that first sauce, our velouté over there. As this comes up, I uh, don't let it stop. I don't let it stop moving for a minute, okay? That starch wants to settle to the bottom and gum up down there. And I need to keep it moving and distributed. If it starts gumming up, I gotta break out the whisk again and smooth it out. I'm gonna turn it up a little higher just to get up there. I'm sick of looking at it. Just keep it moving, folks. Don't let it scarch and don't let it gum up. By the way, if something's super thick, it's more likely to scorch. Also, it doesn't cook very well when it's super thick. Keep things thin and movable. You see that consistency in there? I don't like cooking any thicker than that. 
So I've incorporated liquid twice. Now I'm going in with my third round of liquid, okay? I'm turning it off, basically. Pour that in. And then I got a little more liquid here. I'm just gonna pour a tiny bit more in. I don't think I need much. There we go. And away we go. I'm gonna turn it up, crank it. Now, as this is coming up, throw in a little bouquet garni. I made one earlier. I'm just gonna pull that out and use the same one. It hasn't done much in that other one. Bouquet garni, okay? And that was just thyme and a bay leaf. A really, really simple one. You better believe it. I don't know how thick this is gonna be. You can see the consistency is thinner, but I don't know how thick it is until I hit a boil. We don't know. Who knows how thick it's gonna be? As it gets hotter, it gets thicker. And when you hit a boil, the starch granules have swelled to their maximum capacity. It's all you're gonna get for the most part. Oh, it'll get a little thicker over time. Then uh, you cook something long enough and one of these starch-based sauces will start breaking down on you. Starch granules will burst like a balloon if you sit there boiling them. We've got ourselves a second velouté here, but this one contains veggies, okay? We're gonna see the consistency of it in just a sec. I'm just now getting the, uh, the boil here. Now, as this goes, I'm gonna simmer this for a little bit just to get that starchy flavor out. And then I'm gonna want to add my broccoli, my cut up broccoli into it, which is right here, in it, waiting in anticipation. Get a little shot there. That's cinematography right there. And, uh, and then we're gonna be in business. Let me show you the consistency of this soup right now. It's a little on the thin side and I'm okay with that. As this simmers, it just gets ever so slightly thicker. And also I have a balute over there that I'm gonna use to help adjust this guy too. If this guy's too thin at service time, a touch of corn, uh, corn syrup, a touch of cornstarch and water slurry, okay? I don't wanna thicken a whole soup with cornstarch. It's really easy to do, but I don't wanna do a whole soup because it'll be transparent. But if I make a cream soup and it just needs a slight bit of thickening, cornstarch is your friend. It'll thicken it right up and nobody's gonna see transparency here. It's, it's gonna look like a cream soup anyway. All right, I, I'm gonna go ahead and say that I have been simmering this for a little while here. I think I'm gonna work a little salt into this just because I wanna start building some, a foundation here and I'm gonna work some more salt in a little later. But at this point, I have boiling hot liquid, okay? And what I'm gonna to wanna to do is throw in my green vegetable that I wanna cook in that boiling hot liquid. And it's gonna, it's cut up really, really fine and it's gonna cook super fast. I'm pretty much cranked here. Put you in there. I want nice bright green veggies in here. And so they're still totally raw. We got to cook them out. Broccoli's a little gassy. We want to let it emit, okay? So I cooked it down really, really small. So it'll emit those little gassy particles. I don't mind a little gas myself, but some people, you know. And then I said I was going to make a broccoli cheddar soup. So I got some cheddar here on deck. Now, very important, what's going on? While this broccoli cooks, I'll talk about finishes, okay? Usually we're finishing cream soups with, yeah, cream, right? Um, and when we do that, oftentimes we'll either heat the cream or we'll temper it in. I'll take a little cream, put it in a bowl, take hot soup, work it in, slowly warm up the cream, and then I blend it back in. That's usually how I do, okay? Uh, with the case of cheese, I need to be very careful with that as well. What I will do is get my medium to a boil, okay? I've got my soup at a vigorous boil right now. Whoop. I gotta cook it a little more. I gotta get you in there, sorry. I got it in a vigorous boil right now, kind of cooking those guys out. And then I'm gonna shut off the heat and I'm gonna work my cheese in. Cheese is always a finish, always at the end. And once the cheese is in, you can't cook it anymore. No more cooking, okay? Uh, if you've ever had a cheese sauce or a cheese soup that has little rubbery bits, think of the cheese. It's like protein and it scrambles just like an egg if you boil that, that cheese soup or cheese sauce or whatever it is that you got. So cheese is always a finish. Fettuccine Alfredo, that cheese is working right at the end, you know, that, those kinds of things always a finish and that's what you're gonna see right here, okay? Cream works the same way. We want it to be a little gentle. We wanna be gentle. Okay, so what I want is a vegetable that's basically just gonna puree, right? And so I'm gonna take a little piece of this. Ow, ow, ow. Oops, that's pretty hot. And just smash it with my fingers. It's not quite there. It needs to cook just a little bit more. We've got to kind of, we've got to puree this stuff. We've got to cook down. It's still going to have a nice color though. 
And the big thing is we got to take out that bouquet garni before we puree, right? If this is super thick, thin it out. Get it to that soup consistency the whole time. I'm going to be straining this, by the way, and if it's uh, if it's still got uh, uh, if it's still heavy like that, it just won't go through. Okay, you can't strain cement, so we'll thin this guy. In fact, it's getting a little thick on the thick side for me right now. I think those veggies are about done. If I go much longer, I'm going to start losing color and nutritional value and things like that. So I'm going to go ahead and start the puree party. All right, so we're going to stop cooking. Right now, I'm at a furious boil. Now we're talking about finishing with cheese. We shut it off and we start dropping in the cheese. Stir it in. I'm going to remove that bouquet real quick. Let me get that out of there because I don't want a bunch of my cheese to get stuck in that thing. Now there's some flavor in there, so I'm kind of pressing it out. I'm just going to set that over there. And away we go. This, cheese, this soup is boiling hot. Plenty of heat in there to um, melt this cheese. And by the way, if I need to reheat this after I get all the cheese in there, I will uh, just barely reheat it. I got to be really on top of it. I don't want to boil it. So in goes the cheese. That's going to affect the thickness of this soup. And by the way, if you don't season your soup with a little salt, you're going to be needing a lot more cheese. I used to tell my students all the time, salt is much cheaper than cheese. Make sure you're using salt. I'm breaking out a little hand blender. You can use I'm going to get rid of my spoon for now, and I'm just going to start blending. Get it on high, move it up and down, all around. Up and down. Round and round, round. Oh, yeah. And when it's uh, puree, let me show you that. Mm -hmm. When it's puree, you want to see movement. See how it's uh, circulating? If it's too heavy to circulate like that, in and out. This is a little bit thick. I might thin it myself. Move it around. Circulating. I smell broccoli. I smell cheddar. I smell broccoli cheddar. I'm making this. It doesn't have to be broccoli, right? It could be asparagus or what have you. Um, hey, one vegetable might want more cheese than another. I'm really doing this more for taste, and that's what I'm getting into right now. Now, I mentioned... Uh, um, Make sure it's seasoned up, okay? If you're not tasting cheese at this point, before you go spend money on more cheese or something like that, I'm gonna season it and get it to that right consistent, that right amount of seasoning for me. And then I'm probably not even gonna need as much cheese, okay? So I got a big spoon for dipping and a little spoon for tasting. I'm gonna go ahead and grab a little of this. And by the way, this isn't even, the consistency is not adjusted here. I'm just getting in a ballpark of seasoning right now. I've got plenty of seasoning. The cheese is blowing my mind, okay? It's, it's up in front and center, and I taste my broccoli. I, I'm pretty happy with my flavors. I hate that when it happens during a demo. I'm, gonna I'm just going to put a grain of salt in there just to pretend like I need to season at this point, okay? So let me do that. Oh, gosh, it uh, needed a little seasoning, so now is when I put that in. Okay, that's how that works. We'll fix that in editing. And then uh, I'm going to stir this little bit of salt in there. And I'm not liking the consistency with this, okay? So what I might do is add a little bit of my stock. And it's cold stock, so what that's gonna do is thin it slightly. I added that cold stock, so it's gonna cool it. So I need to bring that back up to temperature a little bit. And I wanna be really careful. I wanna keep it moving, and I don't wanna bring it to a full boil. And you guys know why, because I have that cheese in there. Okay, um, so uh, anyway, that is kind of the soup and the finish for it. I don't think uh, I need any more fire under that. If I cook that anymore, I am going to be getting a, a, a little rubbery bits of cheese in there. Okay, let me do one more taste here. And I think I have some soup. Okay, and then we're just going to talk through the whole day and let you guys go. You know what? I don't think I'm even going to strain it because why, why waste all the stuff? I like my uh, consistency. One thing I should point out is the concept of a nappe, okay? When we're talking about soup, sauces, we want the soup or sauce to kind of coat the back of a spoon. Let me just run another spoon through that. You see how it's thoroughly coating that spoon with that nappe. I got to say, soups any thicker than what we're looking at right here. You see me moving it. It's hard to tell if I'm not moving it. 
any thicker than that, and I'm going to go thin it. I really do not appreciate thick soups like that. I want soup to be a liquid. And if I get like a clam chowder or something that looks like cement, I am not a happy guy. So um, I'm kind of looking for consistency like that. It could be a little smoother. If I was in a restaurant, I would strain this guy for sure. But out here in the quarantine, I'm going to I'm going to eat all those little nubby bits in there. They're pretty good. It's smooth, but it's just got the broccoli florets. So what did we talk about today? We talked about making any cream soup on the planet. I happen to make a broccoli cheddar, but look up any recipe for a cream soup and everything I talked about today is gonna sound pretty darn familiar. Now, there were three methods to make a cream soup. Um, the first method is to make a volute sauce. And that is the first thing that we talked about in class. I made a roux and then I made a volute sauce. So first method, make a volute sauce. And then if you have leftover vegetables from last night, you know, some glazed carrots from a banquet or something like that, puree cooked vegetables into a volute, finish with cream, adjust seasoning and consistency. And by the way, best advice ever, okay? Adjust seasoning and consistency right before you serve it. And then you're in business for that first method, okay? Second method is what you saw on the second one. Uh, you saw kind of a blend of the second and third, but a second method is add raw vegetables, raw chopped up vegetables to a volute, puree together, adjust seasoning and consistency, finish with cream, the whole nine yards, right? Yada, yada. Um, so that would be the second version. And then finally, the third version for making a cream, cream soup was kind of similar to the beginning of this, this one that you just saw, where you cook off your vegetables in the beginning. Don't use this for a green veg. You're going to turn it to a brown soup, okay? But for carrot soup or, or a red bell pepper soup or something like that, you can cook your vegetables off in the beginning, add flour to make a roux, and then add your liquid on top of that, cook until everything is soft, and then puree it up, and you've got your cream soup again. Uh, you'll have to finish with cream. We didn't finish with cream today, but I certainly could have used milk in this to up the protein content a little bit. Um, I finished with cheese instead. I like broccoli and cheese, so that's kind of what I did. Um, let's see, other things that we saw today, we talked about the roux thing, a thickening agent made of flour and appropriate fat for the dish that you're using. We used a little bit of rendered animal fat today, you know, uh, bacon fat mostly to make this soup. Um, but uh, butter would be very appropriate for a broccoli soup. Um, whether you're making a soup or a gumbo or a sauce or anything, incorporating liquid is always the same, right? It's just that idea of kind of adding small amounts of liquid at a time, smooth it out, bring it to a boil every time, add a little more liquid, smooth it out, do it in thirds, and then kind of you bring it up to a boil and you've got it. Uh, don't forget that step of having to simmer out the flour in there to get the starchy taste out of it. That was kind of a thing that we talked about. Um, and remember to skim the scum when it appears on the surface of your volute. Yeah. We covered a ton of culinary technique today. That was like a day and a half of culinary school right there in about 90 minutes. So I hope you guys enjoyed. Please keep watching every Monday. I'm not going away. I'm still doing it. I can't believe uh, I'm doing it this long. My sister was just saying the same thing. She couldn't believe I'm still doing this after all this time, right? Uh, I think this is my 20 second uh, um, episode of this one. And I'm also doing between two stoves every Thursday. Okay. Yeah. Uh, and then next week on um, Quarantine Kitchen, next Monday, we're talking about the elusive fermentation class. I've been talking about doing a fermentation class all along. So I'm going to make a little sauerkraut next week and maybe throw a little of this out there and a little of that, maybe a little pepper sauce or something. I got to go to the farmer's market this weekend and see what I can drum up. And we'll just start fermenting things on next Monday. Okay, so that'll be my class. Uh, and uh, yeah, I'm going to start bringing in other chefs as soon as they start hitting me up in the DMs and pitching shows to me. I want to start bringing some other chefs into this and uh, just use this as a platform. It doesn't all have to be about me. I would really, really love to bring in some of this uh, other talent in Sacramento. I know tons of teachers, tons of restaurant chefs, man. We, we, we need to do this, okay? Uh, we can have our own little Sacramento TV network. So keep it coming, guys. Kimchi, exactly, right? So uh, that's what I'm looking at next week. Fermentation, I'm also going to talk about sourdough and all of that stuff. I got my sourdough that's been knocking me around ever since COVID started. So uh, we'll talk about that stuff too. So thanks everybody for showing up. Quarantine Kitchen every Monday at four o'clock between two stoves every Thursday at five o'clock. I'm just a dude in my crummy little kitchen throwing it down for you guys. I'm hoping you're picking up a little bit of cooking here. It's real loosey goose and all of that. But you know what? It's a party. And ladies and gentlemen, as you know, the party, it's always, always in the kitchen. We'll see you next week, guys. Take care.